Is he going to be involved in, in one deal and leaving us is possible, but it's also possible that he stays. Let's he stays with us or that he leaves us and uh, the market is open. Mkhitaryan and Sanchez linked. Does Mkhitaryan only go if Sanchez comes? I have a squad of, of 22 players and I want to keep a squad of, of 22 players. Let's see what, what is going to happen. It's a pity that the market closes only on the 31st. The market should close maybe tomorrow and finish with everything. Well, back now to uh, James Cooper in Manchester, who's at the heart of this story. James, where does Mkhitaryan's future lie? Yeah, I think it's an interesting question there, and I think probably most Manchester United fans would agree with me that it's been a shame it hasn't quite worked out as they would have hoped for Henrik Mkhitaryan. I think, as Tony Gale has said there, you know, Jose Mourinho has certain ideas about his squad and how he wants his players to play. Uh, Henrik Mkhitaryan gives him plenty of silk, but I think what we've seen in big moments and big games is he hasn't given the steel that perhaps that, uh, Alexis Sanchez would give both silk and steel. I think we haven't seen the steel from Henrik Mkhitaryan. I think that's been one of the problems why it hasn't worked quite as well as Manchester United would have planned when they brought him to Old Trafford 18 months ago as part of that big summer spending spree. Um, I think there's a key negotiation perhaps between Arsenal and Henrik Mkhitaryan's uh, uh, representatives and I think also between Arsenal and Manchester United about that. I think he is probably one of the keys to this deal because if you look, Manchester United might well give a sizable fee to Arsenal, they might give a player in Henrik Mkhitaryan, they'll certainly come up with the wages that Alexis Sanchez and his representatives are dreaming of and you know, come out of this window and Arsenal look maybe a stronger proposition with Henrik Mkhitaryan in their side and maybe even somebody to go and buy a more offensive striker as well. So. Not a bad window, not a bad player to get. As I say, a bit of a shame it hasn't worked out quite how Manchester United or Henrik Mkhitaryan would have wanted at Manchester United. And incidentally, I am told this morning that Borussia Dortmund aren't interested in a return for him to the German Bundesliga. Of course, Manchester United signing him from Borussia Dortmund. Dortmund aren't interested in taking the player back. Interesting. You heard what James was saying there. Too much silk, not enough steel for Mkhitaryan. You're a big fan of his, so would Arsenal be getting a good deal here? Yeah, I'm a big fan. I've seen him for Dortmund on many occasions, as I've seen Aubameyang as well. So if you've got the two for Sanchez coming in, obviously Mkhitaryan would be part of the, the transfer swap and Aubameyang they'd be buying. That isn't bad business at the end of it, after the mess that they found themselves in when they were talking about the contracts and, and where they're at at the moment. But Mkhitaryan is an Arsenal-type player. Well, while the future of Sanchez remains in the air, at the moment, Arsenal remain optimistic of signing Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang from Borussia Dortmund. That's according to our colleague uh, Guillaume Balagui. He's been told Arsenal are willing to spend 60 million euros to land their man. He would be a straight replacement uh, for Sanchez. They think that they've convinced the player to join Arsenal, but of course, there's still a big uh, obstacle to beat, which is Borussia Dortmund. 60 million play, uh, euros is what they expect to take the player to Arsenal. But as I said, Borussia Dortmund will come back to uh, Arsenal with, uh, with their conditions or just the fact that they won't want to sell at all. Uh, the impression from Arsenal, they are optimistic. They think this is a deal that could be done. Next, more Arsenal transfer news and where next for this man. This is Transfer Centre. Now remember to keep across our live blog for all the latest deals. That's on our website and digital devices. Let's get more on that man up there, Alexis Sanchez. Now United are prepared to pay Sanchez £350,000 a week in wages to take him to Old Trafford, making him the fourth highest paid player in the world. Gary Neville and Jamie Carragher discuss the deal on Monday Night Football. If Alexis Sanchez had two years left on his contract now, he'd have to pay Arsenal £75, £80 million pounds and pay him 200 grand, 250 grand a week. It costs you 100 million. He's going to cost you 100 million anyway. It's not about money. It's the fact that the man is possibly, well, it looks like I would imagine he's give his word that he's going to come and he shook hands on it. He shook hands on a deal almost. But it looks like he's backed out of a deal and that's why Man City have backed out of a deal. Manchester United have offered Arsenal £15 million pounds more as a club. Why would Arsenal sell to Manchester City over Manchester United that, to start I don't think that's got anything to do with it. Of course it's got something it to do hasn't. with it. Because well, Sanchez just sit there and say, I'm not going. And Arsenal, I could, just go to send, and Arsenal could just sit there and not sell. And lose nothing. It's not about offering less money. They've had, they've had a deal. They've shook on a deal and someone's come in at the last minute, offered them more money 
that, that's the problem. If you're an attack and play, you're time for Pep Guardiola. No, if you're gonna, a defender, we're, we're, you're time for We're going to pay £30 million pounds less to those three parties. Oh, we still think that player should come to us. How can that be? This is Manchester United, by the way. This is not, we're not talking about going playing for Salford. We're talking about going for one of the biggest clubs in the world. Still with Arsenal, and there's been conflicting reports over whether Bordeaux will sell their winger Malcolm to Arsenal this month. We're told Arsenal are interested in him, but there's been nothing more formal at this stage. The club's president says there's nothing new to add, but the coach yesterday revealed the Brazilian winger is considering a potential uh, move to Arsenal, staying with Arsenal. They've been so busy, they're expected to be busy for the next couple of weeks now. And the future uh, of uh, Theo Walcott, the out of favour forward, came on for the last. 14 minutes of Sunday's defeat uh, at Bournemouth, but hasn't started a Premier League game uh, since April. Talks continue with Everton over permanent move, but have the last team he faced now joined the race for the England International in a World Cup year? Same as it was, I think, about two, three days ago. Uh, nothing happening. Any progress around um, potential departure of Lewis Graben? No. Again, when you're talking about front freeze, he can come off the right or the left. Uh, blessed with blistering pace, uh, can improve uh, with his back to goal, but the pace aspect is the one. And no, no it's not just having pace, uh, Theo's always had the pace, it's how to exploit that pace, the timing of the runs to get him behind. It, and I've seen him in Champions League football, I like the look of him, I think he'd be a good signing for Arsenal. So, dramatic scenes there and a dramatic twist in the Alexis Sanchez saga. Manchester City have pulled out of the deal. So, is the window wide open for Manchester United? Well, not so, because Chelsea have thrown their hats into the ring. All this while Manchester United were winning 3-0 against Stoke. More next. Manchester City pull out of the race to sign Alexis Sanchez as Manchester United prepare a deal worth in excess of £100 million. Pounds. Henrik Mkhitaryan is being offered to Arsenal as a make-weight, but Jose Mourinho isn't taking anything for granted. Probably there are other clubs also interested and other clubs also also trying and uh, I don't know and I feel I shouldn't speak about the player that is an Arsenal player. In a fresh twist, Chelsea are trying to hijack the deal and bring Sanchez to Stamford Bridge. And away from the Sanchez saga, Manchester United beat Stoke 3-0 to cut the gap on City to 12 points. Welcome to Sky Sports News. Also on the way, the latest on the futures of Malcolm and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang as Arsenal look for possible replacements for Sanchez. Plus, we'll hear from Ryan Giggs on becoming Wales manager and Ben Stokes bears to clear his name after being charged with the fray. First, to more extraordinary developments on the future of Alexis Sanchez. We understand that Manchester City have pulled out of the race to sign the Arsenal forward. That appeared to pave the way clear for Manchester United. But then, a fresh twist, with Chelsea now making a late move to hijack the deal. We are told Manchester City have ended their interest in signing Alexis Sanchez. The reason? You won't believe it. Well, a club who can spend as much as City, it's the cost of the deal that's become too expensive as far as they're concerned. It's understood that to compete with offers from other Premier League clubs, it would mean Sanchez would become the highest paid player at Manchester City and spending more than the £60 million deal which was agreed in principle with Arsenal last summer. Now, Pep Guardiola had talked with the City chairman earlier on and it was agreed by both of them that it was too much to pay for a player who would effectively be available on a free transfer in the summer. Now, we're told by sources at City that Sanchez had indicated, and indicated in strong terms, that the Etihad would have been his preferred destination. But it was a deal that the club was planning for, not now, but in the summer when his contract expired, hence on a free transfer. Another factor is the fitness of Gabriel Jesus. You'll remember he got injured against Crystal Palace a couple of weeks ago. It was thought then that the injury would keep him out for perhaps a month, perhaps two, perhaps even longer. His recovery has been faster than expected. The injury isn't as bad as first feared. He's ahead of schedule. He could be back for the Champions League knockout phase against Basel. 
Furthermore, there's a feeling that adding another forward player like Alexis Sanchez might upset what's been described as the equilibrium at Manchester City. Where does this leave Manchester United? Everyone just assumes that's where he's going to go now. Right, we've been telling you that Manchester United are favourites to sign Alexis Sanchez. United are confident that they have the right package in place, not only to satisfy what Arsenal would be looking for in a transfer fee, but also what Sanchez would want in wages. It's thought United are prepared to pay £35 million plus £5 million in agents' fees. As for Sanchez, he would earn, wait for this, over £350,000 a week. Another factor that seems to tip the balance towards United is this, the element of a potential swap in the deal. Alexis Sanchez to Old Trafford, Henrik Mkhitaryan to the Emirates. Now has that part of the deal just moved closer? This was Jose Mourinho on Sanchez and Mkhitaryan after United's win over Stoke City. I spoke in your press conference about, on Friday about if a big opportunity comes up in the transfer market, fighting for that opportunity. Do you feel now with Alexis Sanchez you're close to winning that fight? I have no idea. To be honest, I have no idea. Today I was uh, completely separate of, of all of that. I was just focused on, on, my, on my match and not worried about anything else than the match. What difference would he make to you, Jose? I'm not going to speak about hypothetical uh, situations. I think he can be he is Arsenal player and can be Arsenal player. But jo um, uh, Arsene Wenger has talked about him being on standby, could have gone on Sunday, could go today, could go tomorrow. Yeah, but probably there are other clubs also interested and other clubs also, also trying. And uh, I don't know. And I feel I shouldn't speak about a player that is an Arsenal player. What about Henrik Mkhitaryan then, your player? You didn't play him tonight. He's, out there. He's a Manchester United player, I can speak about him. He's a player that I, I like, he's a player of, uh, of high quality, he's a player that has a lot to give us. Is he going to be involved in, in one deal and leaving us is possible, but it's also possible that he stays. And I'm just trying to protect him and to protect the team also a little bit. So let's make sure that he stays with us or that he leaves us and uh, the market is open. Mkhitaryan and Sanchez? linked does Mkhitaryan only go if Sanchez comes? I have a squad of, of 22 players and I want to keep a squad of, of 22 players maybe maybe just because I want I want to make the kid a good player and I'm not giving him the chances I'm giving to Scott McTominay for example Axel Tonzebe because he plays in a position where uh, I have so many players today on the bench I had Marcos Rojo and and Lindelof and Eric Bailly still in recovering, so I'm not giving the chances to Axel. So probably Axel is the only one that um, I open the door for him to go and play because I believe he's really a good talent and he needs to play. A part of that, the numbers we have, we are playing Champions League, uh, FA Cup, uh, Premier League. I have to keep the number of players we have. But the bad news is they've got competition. Yes, they have a further twist. One source has told us that Chelsea are now in the equation. What we said earlier about City pulling out because they thought they weren't willing to match offers from other Premier League clubs, suggesting more than just United. And we're now in a situation where the bitter feud between Jose Mourinho and Antonio Conte has taken another turn. This was Conte last week when he was asked about Sanchez. I have great admiration for, uh, for uh, great players. I think uh, Alexis Sanchez is one of, uh, of this, uh, this player. And, uh, uh, and uh, I stop. If Manchester City wants Alexis Sanchez, they buy Alexis Sanchez. They, they, they don't have problem uh, in, uh, uh, about, uh, about money, about this investment. And I think that uh, is uh, also a good investment because we are talking about uh, a, a top, a top player in a, in a moment that you can buy him uh, uh, with a price uh, not so high. Wenger said yesterday, 48 hours for a resolution. We could have a resolution tomorrow. United favourites, Chelsea in the mix. Jose V Conte for Sanchez. What a transfer we have on our hands.
So Manchester City deem the deal too expensive, but this is what they're giving up on. Sanchez has made 166 appearances for Arsenal, scoring 80 goals at a rate of a goal every 169 minutes. He's also created 359 chances for his teammates. That's better than two chances per game. And he's also registered 41 assists. Gary Neville and Jamie Carragher discuss Sanchez's possible move to United on Monday Night Football and the figures involved. Somebody in Sanchez's camp has given Manchester United uh, an inkling that the door's open, that it's not a done deal. I thought this was a done deal to Manchester City. I think everybody did. I don't think anybody thought anything else unless Sanchez will end up playing for Pep Guardiola at Manchester City. But from what we hear... On top of that, our Spanish football expert Guillaume Balaguer is reporting that Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang is hoping to move to the Emirates. The player and with Borussia Dortmund, uh, they think that they've convinced the player to join Arsenal. But of course, there's still a big uh, obstacle to beat, which is Borussia Dortmund. Tomorrow is going to be an important day. Nobody expects this to be happen uh, in this early part of the week. It may take the, the whole week or even more, because they will hear tomorrow Arsenal if Borussia Dortmund are selling cheaply, are selling expensively, or are selling it quickly. Just the details of what Borussia wants to do or if they want to sell at all. Uh, Arsenal are willing to pay 60 million euros for the player. Somebody uh, that they were interested in in the summer decided not to go for him. It would have been more expensive then, actually. But uh, 60 million play, uh, euros is what they expect uh, to take the player to Arsenal. But as I said, tomorrow Borussia Dortmund will come back to uh, Arsenal with, uh, with their conditions or just the fact that they won't want to sell at all. Uh, the impression from Arsenal, they are optimistic, they think this is a deal that could be done, but of course there's still a lot of things to do uh, for that to happen. Another match after his display, and here's why. Only teammate Nemanja Matic made more passes, although Pogba made the most forward passes. He also created two assists during the game. He made four chances for his teammates, and that's more than any other player on the pitch. And he also entered the second most duels, 15 in total, and he confirmed he was enjoying his current role when he spoke to the Monday Night Football team after the game. I'm playing more forward, so I'm more free. I have more freedom to go forward as well, you know, to have some more passing in front. And, um, yeah, to be honest, we, I would say, like, uh, the team performance is, uh, is very positive this time. You say you have more freedom, Paul. Do you think that suits you, that role? Yeah, I mean, uh, I can uh, use more my uh, ability, my attribute, you know, to go forward, to use my power, uh, shoot, uh, try to make an uh, assist. So, yeah, I think it's more... It suit me more, I would say. It's nine assists now for you, Paul, personally. It, that's m as many as anybody else in the Premier League right now. Is that how you measure your own performance? Um, I mean, it's, re it's really good for me, you know, uh, to make some assists, to make uh, the teammates score. And, uh, but the, the most important is to win. So, um, that we're winning, I can make assists. That obviously, it's, uh, I, enjoy, I enjoy doing this. If I can do more, if I can score more goals, that would be that would be great, but uh, the most important is the result. Catch them, and uh, like everyone, you want to win the league, and you know that we you are far away, but you're gonna try it. They miss him so much um, when he's not there. The drop in performance in terms of the connection from defence up to attack with him not there is completely different with United. Obviously, the, the City game. Uh, my view with him is that. Um, He's got the confidence, the arrogance, the personality to play for United. He always wants the ball. I sometimes think in big games, can he play in a two? Because I think he does, he said there about him going forward, he does wander away from the centre of midfield and does leave gaps. But can you get away with that on a night like tonight against no, Stoke, perhaps? Definitely tonight there's no problems. I thought it was sensational. I thought actually Lukaku was probably my man of the match. I thought Pogba was fantastic, but Lukaku was, I thought was really good. Uh, as well, um, but I think maybe in the big games, maybe big European games, Josie might look at using him in a three, which to be fair, I think he played Everton away where he played in that sort of left hand side. But I think when he's got that freedom to roam, to influence the game, he's uh, he, he to me connects the team from back to front. I know that Jesse Lingard plays in that number 10 role, but he really is the magic in that sort of you want to get him on the ball as much as possible. So.
So Southampton, as we know, are another club who have an interest in Theo Walcott, but much will depend on their move for this man, Guido eh, Carrillo. They're in talks with Monaco for the striker and are hopeful of concluding a deal for him. The Saints have not discussed potential moves, though, for Atletico Madrid player Nico Guaitan nor Kevin Gamero, we are told, eh, contrary to reports. From Southampton, though, eh, into London, and we go to West Ham United, a club who expect to be really busy in the last eh, 15 days of this transfer transfer window. Diafra eh, Sacco, as you can see there, um, Diafra Sacco is a player that he feels is undervalued compared to other forwards at the club. Sacco is on £30,000 a week, while other forwards earn three or four times eh, as much as that. Now, Sacco believes he was promised a, a new improved contract, which has not materialised. A proposed £10 million move to Crystal Palace fell through last week. We are told the following clubs are interested in signing the Senegal striker. Swansea, West Brom, Brighton, Bordeaux, Rennes, Nice and Marseille. That's a lot of interest in Diafra Sacco. Now staying uh, with West Ham United and we move on to their striker Andy Carroll. He's always mentioned in this transfer window, isn't he? And here he uh, is again. They have said he will not be allowed to leave out on loan during the transfer window. We understand that Chelsea have made contact, but West Ham are bemused by that approach. Carroll, who has scored uh, just twice so far this season, is valued by West Ham at over £35 million. And we're told they would only be interested in a permanent deal for the England international. Let's just mark your card, that breaking news, just going off the bottom edge of your screen there. And this is Williams have announced Sergo Sorotkin as their second driver for the 2018 uh, Formula One season. He's going to partner Lance Stroll. Uh, this is to come in for Felipe Massa. Uh, Robert Kubitska was linked with it, but he um, dropped out of the running following Sorotkin's uh, impressive show in the end of season testing in Abu Dhabi. So he has got the drive on that one. Uh, where will Andy Carroll? will be driving up front uh, for the rest of the season right how as important is is he for West Ham and what they're trying to do or would they be willing to let Andy Carroll go well this is a game I was at recently Rob you saw two great goals against West Brom and Andy's got that ability to score that kind of goal that probably no one else could score when he rises up against defenders but judging by his um, team selections David Moyes he looks like he's going to prefer an, an Outovic up front or an Antonio, should an Outovic not be fit, and then Lanzini playing a, a in and around him. So it's got to be a, a difficult one for Andy. Could find himself a bit of an impact player. These were two great goals he got, by the way. That was uh, his right foot, his wrong foot on that far post, an acute angle, and the header was, was one of the best headers I've seen this season. But that's what he's got. That's what he brings to the, to the table. But then... After that, he gets injured again, so we need him to be fit and uh, firing. And he, even if he's an impact player for West Ham, he's still got to have a big bearing on what is a long season still. West Brom have uh, approached Fulham with a view to signing their playmaker uh, Tom Kearney. One source has told us a £15 million bid has been made for one of the championship top players. However, sources at both clubs uh, deny this. Fulham's stance has always been they don't intend to sell their top players this month. Kearney was on the bench at the weekend uh, as Fulham won away at Middlesbrough. Manager Alan Pardew has been told he has to sell before he can buy this window. Tony, it's another of your former clubs. You see a lot of them. Just how good is Tom Kearney? Tom Kearney's top quality. And is Tom Kearney, of course, a player that Newcastle United tried to, sell, uh, tried to sign uh, last summer. And a line we can bring you from uh, the North East and from Newcastle, that they are considering a move for the Crystal Palace left-back Papa Suari. Rafa Benitez is keen to bring in competition uh, for Paul Dummett, and he is one of a number of players on his left-back list. Newcastle are still to add anyone this transfer window, with the Spaniards saying that he still doesn't know his transfer budget. So all sorts going on at Newcastle with the takeover as well, uh, bubbling away uh, in the background and just a final uh, line to bring you if I can from uh, Scotland and it involves Rangers they signed Jason Cummings last night on a, a, a loan until the end of the season from Nottingham Forest and this man Russell Martin is landing what about now at Glasgow Airport and that is also a loan deal until the end of the season Well, let's just confirm what Keith was saying there. That line about Jason Cummings is uh, on loan from Nottingham Forest until the end of the season with an option to make...
Now, a reminder that you can listen to our Transfer Talk podcast, where our reporters discuss all the latest news and rumours that's available to download on the Sky Sports website, iTunes and Acast. And Transfer Centre returns later, three in the afternoon, then again at seven and at ten this evening, right here on Sky Sports News. Now, if you're just tuning in for Sports Women, that's coming up now at 12.30 today. Stay with us.